आप करिए नेटवर्क बायोलॉजी Algorithm development and data mining. He has a specialization in the rapidly evolving field of next generation sequencing analysis and inter- interpretation. In addition, he is an expert in metabolomic network reconstitution. Shivan, what is the award? Informatics Fellowship Lepper for the National Resource for Network Biology in our NB organization under the Google's uh, Google Summer of uh, Code 2014 program. His developed software is available on the website and is very useful for the scientific community. He is also a recipient of the prestigious Young Scientist Award from GSBTM and the Competitive Grant Supporting Travel Fellowship Award from Newcastle University, United Kingdom, Britain. Dr. Dave has published more than 11 peer-reviewed research publications in reputed journals. He has also served as a potential reviewer for many uh, journals. So, uh, without wasting time, I'll just uh, hand over the baton to our speaker, Dr. Dave, sir. Yeah. Uh, Please so, carry on. So, uh, thank you, thank so you Sven, sir, and uh, thank you, Gopal ji, sir. It's a first time kind of the interactions I'm going through. Uh, so, pardon me if the, there is a glitch might be happen. <laughs> so, because he uh, is also assistant professor at Sarda University, Noida. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Sir. In Department of Life Sciences. Yes, oh, great, great, sir, great. Time. So it's my pleasure to you know the talk with the such science dialogues because uh, you know uh, as a bioinformatics community I always uh, work as a hidden developer but this is the first time I open up these things uh, as a community part. So uh, so uh, we are not wasting time and let's uh, begin our the journey of the particular the today's topic which we are talking about that. So thank you Gopal ji sir and again uh, all the like the who are the particularly conducting such kind of the initiative. So let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, so my screen is visible, I think. Yeah. Not visible. Okay. पहले तो हुआ था. uh yes now visible okay great great so uh so let's begin about the topic of today uh the basically the role of bioinformatics and the multiomics research and the career and i would like to begin with the my first slide which is very famous one and uh, i think those who are the study the bioinformatics or the any subjects even the uh, the first semester of the one subjects like the bioinformatics this image must be appears uh, any of the teacher slides or any of the particular presenter slide so uh, specifically uh, we are talking about that the one elephant in standing and uh, the many people are this just just looking a very different different way different approach and whatever the like idea of element uh, the comes with hand so they can uh, identify that this is my area of the studies like some persons identify the teeth if you see there is a call as a drug designing or uh, use as a teeth for that some are used for the genome analysis some are for the algorithm development and some are the basically data analysis some are the statistical approach and uh, in the re- in the today's world also there is a realistic pictures so bioinformatics it's not like looks like bioinformatics now it's now it looks like the more data science now nowadays and it's a very much a uh, hard way to understand the different disciplines and the how to integrate the dis- discipline there is a major concept for that okay so what is a bioinformatics so if you ask in the google with the one single terms like if you write the bioinformatics you get the such big amount of the results and uh, like i just mentioned the today's ratio like the i just google it and identify the what is the number of that so it's a billions number in if you see in the screen and many times 
the bioinformatics refers with the very different terminologies like the computational biology, computational molecular biology, biocomputing, and it's a list is more and more. But our approach is more uh, to understand that how the holistic uh, things should be the combined. Okay. Now uh, let's begin with the, some understanding about that uh, how the uh, the so basically the just understand one concept like how the base to uh, reduce the iterations and uh, discover the progress of target or the successful what data analytics method or approach for create uh, for that and if you see the some scientists uh, basically are the taking one uh, like jigsaw and they are the taking that own side so that is the current scenario like the suppose the bioinformatics are working on some data science so they are the keeping some data for the industrial purpose but thanks to the new policy which is come with the european guidelines they are coming with the research data consortium rdc consortium so that time they are the combining all the data for that uh, just a second i i find some glitch on my slide of the uh, transcriptome level then if they are very much efficient they can go with the genome assembly and focusing the futures and the, like the how the immune system how the genetics advance technology AIML, functional genomics work and these three things combine in nowadays in bioinformatics very simple understanding is that people are basically previously dealing with the human genetics like the what kind of the genetics level change and the phenotypic change they are seeing that Secondly, they are the change, changing that what is the functional level they find the differences and nowadays due to the advancement of the machine learning and the AI, they can combine all the three different domains and identify the, what is the success rate of this particular problem. And there is most company in the pharmaceuticals and nowadays there is a specific pharmaceutical based model to those who are providing the bioinformatics services. They are also the following such model for that when they are the integrating the AI and ML for that. Okay. Yeah. So, how the bioinformatics and what is the role of that? Basically, if you see there is a one engine and the second engines, both are the basically engines, but there is a one is very much uh, like you no know, workable and another is not workable. We can say that some kind of the segmentations. But if we want to the analysis of the how the engines malfunction how the particular the the system will be malfunction we need to understand that each and every aspect of the particular the uh, this machine and there is a large number of the we can say that the day, uh, instead of this machine part we consider the jigsaw sequence data and this jigsaw machines like there are the genome sequence there are the proteins there are the metabolites how they are interacting to each other so same way there is an engine so if you want to the human body work properly without the disease condition so you must understand the each and every except of the particular the cell component for that and that is the most important part for the understanding okay now the second part is that how the bioinformatics are basically helping in the particularly uh, we can say that analysis of the large number of data in the right hand side if you see the genomic segment that is epigenomic transcriptomics proteomics metabolomics and microbes and in the time of that there are the different uh, uh, the size of the data, different kind of the uh, the length of the sequences. Similarly, functional analysis also different. Even the today's the gut microbe also the one of the crucial playing uh, in the disease conditions. Metabolomics also there. And how this input and output is work? There is a which is called as our human body is a hidden box. So the bioinformatics itself is a one of the uh, the no. Uh, we can say combination of the different domain knowledge when the, they can understand the what is environmental the epigenetic what is the diet level when there is a gut microbiome what is the lifestyle when there is a uh, different level proteum and metabolic level playing a role genetics level we are talking about that how there is a dna structures will be modified on transcriptal level we also consider that and overall health disease and aging and ability conditions 
So this is the one of the basic idea how the input and output work and where the bind from this is required. Now I I go with a little bit tricky terminology here. Now, if you want to analysis any kind of the uh, disease condition, or if you want to the analysis on the one complex conditions, currently we are call about the multi level uh, or multi scale interactions. In the atomic level, when there is hydrogen proton and like the different uh, there is a chemical entity we are interacting. Second level, this chemical interacting uh, interacting with the another, so there are the specific some function. Then they are come on the cellular level when there is a cell cell interaction will be there. If they are talking about that uh, immune cell interact with the, some neuron cells or maybe the our different uh, blood cells or heart cells are interacting with the, some kind of the inflammation cell. So there are the cell cell interactions. Secondly, the tissue organs and the organisms. So we are we must understand that where the bioinformatics are playing a crucial role. So basically bioinformatics are playing a crucial role in every aspect, starting with the molecular level, when there is a simulation state analysis required, when there is a particular the multi-level, there is a different kind of the protein uh, water environment to the protein lipid layer environment when there are the those who are performing the simulations with the uh, CHAM32 or maybe the different amber simulations, they can know that multi-level. Secondly, there are cell level interactions. There are the particular the different transcriptome analysis is required. Now the tissue level, there is a single cell RNA also very crucial uh, in the playing a role for that. On organisms level, you can combine the, all the data and check with the biochemical pathway analysis for that. So there is a multi-level analysis is required for that. Now, how the complex disease and heat heritability or, or heterogeneous things will be happen. Like everyone talking about the polygenetic systemic scores and uh, one disease is one mechanism. No, that is not possible in human because we have the large number of the systems when there is a different kind of the uh, like interactions, different kind of the particular the atomic playing a role, different pathway or interactions. And these pathways are playing a major chunk of role for the analysis. So one disease is equal to one mechanism is not possible. That's why we require the different compartment data. In different compartment data like the what is a uh, pathogenically uh, there is a environmental factors, might be there is a transcription factors, might be there are the process factors which is all about that how the simulation score will be the implied for that and we have to categorize to identify the disease condition for that. Okay. So, now we are talking about that one of the studies which is called as a genome-wide association studies. And why I am talking about that? Because if you see this one paper which is published in 2011, this is basically a case study for that. And they identify one of the targets, but Due to that particular the considerations, this uh, the target is not too much validated. So, as a part of that, they are not do so much clinical trials. They are only the focusing on the particularly the uh, GISWA study, like the genome uh, uh, genome wide association studies, and the based on that they identify target and they use uh, by the particularly in the 2014 the AstraZeneca and to, for, to get the higher success rate. And this is the first time they understand that what is the power of the particular, the one of the method in the bioinformatics people are using where, when there is a linkage analysis, like the different kind of the analysis is done. And what will be the, we are benefited for that. So they basically benefited in the fold ratio for that. And there is a target indication pair genetic support and the two-fold higher ratio they are getting. So, Based on these studies, they can uh, uh, hide some of the uh, like uh, area when there is a low, uh, less number of the target uh, will be achievable, but they can identify the very potential target which is the efficiently give the more related for that. So that is one of the important uh, the studies in the bioinformatics field, they find that. Okay. Similarly, based on that, 
one of the studies the 50 drug approved by the in 2021 and why i'm giving these numbers because after the like uh, covid uh, with the help of the bioinforma this is the highest number they are the submitted which is called as a approved drug in list might be they are not in the up to the clinical uh, they are not uh, everything is the market now but the FDA approval means they are the giving the very high number of ratio for that and based on that they are giving the uh, like what exactly the mechanism inside how the target influence the disease and based on this whole the things are related with the bioinformatics and different approach for that okay now i give some glimpse on that how they are the genetic target target mechanisms and disease mechanism can be identified here at left hand side if you see that specifically they are talking about that different kind of the scores with the metabolomics and there are the interaction protein protein interactions of that based on that they identify the expression signature and which is called as a multi-level analysis when there is a metabolic data also integrated transcriptome data also integrated and when they identify that which are the more powerful uh, mechanism to rule out and the last one if you see the what is a higher expression of genes when the combination of the target and the non-target signature so when there is a it's a very older image but if you see the rate side there is a higher number of the we can say that the one disease condition or the one common family gene expressions or the large number of the gene expression uh, will be the give the target signature for that so what is the benefit of using such techniques like if there is a data data will be analyzed and after the analysis we get some small number of target so if we do this in the in silico way it def it reduce the years of types like the, the target identifications or disease mechanism identifications it's a very crucial role but it's a more important part is that how we can minimize the timeline with the use of the such techniques okay in this one specifically we are talking about that deep phenotypic understand the molecular mechanism of disease and the multiomics with the link with the patient's clinical data and uh, these questions often uh, asked by that uh, as a bioinformatics person i always uh, face such questions you are you people are working in the in silico how the clinical data will be correlated what will be the get the benefit for that but people must understand that every uh, the study it's always related with the data either they are dealing with the clinical like the the blood data either they are dealing with the, some kind of the drug uh, related to the pharmacokinetics data if you are doing the experiment in the some sequence level that the rt pcr data we, which is considerable some you are using the uh, enzyme assay data that time you are the changing the some kind of the patent in the enzymatic uh, with the curve with that so everything we can call as a data intensive so now deep phenotyping to understand the molecular mechanism is that it gives the idea about the what will be the molecular integrations can be identified with the available data so if you see the left hand side there is a gene expression omnibus and this gene expression omnibus also have the large number of transcription data is deposited either the we are talking about some specific studies either the we are talking about the bulk studies when there is a 300 400 patient data is a one single studies but they also the very curated one with the large number of the samples uh, the uh, cell types or the different uh, disease mechanism so people are using these studies to identify the which open targets which target can be used for the drug designing and uh, specifically we are talking about that uh, like uh, animal model translation biochemical discovery which is all part will be the integrated so moreover when there is a gene expression data will be the bulkly available so why the people are testing in animal every time they must use the available data and nowadays the people are doing the similar way so instead of the every time the sacrificing the animal for the clinic uh, the some drug testing or pkpa study they use the study in the rna expressions and they check with the targets 
they go with the open targets which is the available uh, the target finding the database and uh, they check whether there is available targets available for that or not and it it workable they can go with the identify as a biomarker and precise study for that okay now the multi omics data integrations and interpretations and uh, it's a very crucial one when you understand the different uh, technologies like uh, the might be it's a very difficult when there is a students like they start to learn the bioinformatics but moreover when uh, they must understand that the bioinformatics is not a one single discipline bioinformatics is basically the interdiscipline when there is a different kind of the uh, the theory like we can call a system theory graph theory when there are the multi uh, scale theory when there is a integration will be that uh, the differential equations there is a uh, the we can call about the first level differential second level differential equation so this is a mathematical concept also the in integrated part so once you understand these concepts the holistic way this cells and interactions uh, data give some idea on that what exactly happen in the interactions level in the graph theory will we give idea about that what are the potential target what are the non potential target for that so likewise there is a integrations cell cell integrations then there is a casual reasoning sometimes these uh, like if you talk about some enzymes these enzyme are often low uh, inclined towards the such enzymatic reactions whatever the reasons in the body is that but this enzyme always the inclined toward the search kind of the enzymatic so we help, we also identified separately that kind of the reasoning mechanism for that second thing we are talking about that integrative analysis when there is a genotypic uh, single cell omics spatelomics there is a very new terms for the nowadays means you are very localized to particular the area there is a this omics technology bulk omics and you combine all the things for understanding about that target biomarker discovery and uh, like every kind of the analysis for that so there is what is objective for analysis your more objective is that special specific identification of the disease condition or the drug related study for that okay now here i'm just talking about that one multi omics model with the network and if you see the very smaller network here uh, there is a small networks like the a b c d e f g h i j and there is a different arrow is there but how i create the network i combine the three kind of the data here if the see the left hand side with the arrow the transcriptomic proteomics and the metabolomics and i combine all the data and i make the particular network to identify which metabolomics or which proteomes are playing a inhibition role or playing a activation role so there is a most important task as a bioinformatics to rule out which player are the in the team like you cannot keep everyone in the team to like getting a success story or the specifically uh, the winning a team so more important part is that you have to scrutinize which player which are the inhibitions which are the activations and you have to keep that in the particular area to understand the whole the uh, uh, disease mechanism or some kind of the uh, the analysis context so high throughput area and the multi omics which is the more important for the understanding of that now how the multi omics data will be the integrated and uh, uh, like inference mechanisms with that if you see that casual network with the include the measure for the molecular abundance but what exactly the abundance means there is a sometime the up regulations down regulations and we must understand that this all the data either we are talking about the proteomics data either we are talking about the metabolomics data or the transcriptomics which have the rna expressions even the single cell analysis everything have some quantifications and we cannot directly rely on that unless and until we normalize the data uh, we have to scrutinize that what are the interrelations between that and that's why we are doing more relevant on the network analysis and the network analysis are basically give the idea that which player or which player is essential in this network 
okay suppose in this network if i am remove the e so my network work properly can anyone give me idea for that if i am removing uh, my this e from the network It means seems like that everyone is listening. I think it will work. Even then, it will work. Even that will work. Okay. Uh, so only the E is the responsible for the removing. Okay. So the gentleman, I don't know the who is the answering, but uh, I think it's work. But. Problem we are not. Hey, 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 retired professor from Delhi University. Okay, sorry, sir. <laughs> I, I, uh, my screen is the on, so I'm not testing yes, the yes. name yes. for that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Please, yes, please sir. continue. Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, my, my what I'm uh, conveying here, uh, we must understand these interactions very carefully. And uh, this is only that I'm talking about the few numbers. But in the when we are dealing with the transcriptome data or babies like the metabolic data, the size is like the uh, more than the like we can say the five thousand proteins or the six thousand proteins, and uh, usually. Uh, I, I, my, my computer has the 122 GB RAMs, but sometimes this RAM also the incompatible for the some basic analysis. So uh, uh, why I'm telling because the you understand that the both weather, uh, the Harvard part also the very essential for that. Okay, so back to the point. When we are the combining the, all the data, we have to understand that how the quantifications and up regulations and down regulations are playing a role for that, and based on that we narrow down with the path scoring which path have the very much reliability on the previous node like a b c d e f g each are the basically consider the node but in the context of the biochemical analysis we must understand that which node is very crucial for that and we can combine if there is a lacking part of that, suppose there is a gap filling is required. Previously, there is a concept called a genome genome based metabolic reconstruction. So that time the people are the filling the uh, some uh, area when there is a network is not available. So they provide the artificial network for the making a understand whether the network is sustained or network with the collapse. So there is a one way the infer mechanism for that. Okay. So one of the studies which is the network based equations of the genetic association and uh, it's a very much uh, uh, well study there are the many company are the uh, funding is open target mechanism uh, so there is open target uh, one of the website when there is a people are identify the some uh, uh, disease target very precisely and uh, they are used the network based expressions for the genetic studies for that okay now why the network to study the human genetics so basically the guilt by association spreading the functional using the network and what are the druggable target and not druggable target we have to segregate both the one and the locus of genes prediction of causal gene so likewise we have to very much careful about that which target because when we are the talking about the multi-omics the multi-omics itself has a very uh, smaller level, smaller level studies for that. And that time we are uh, more reliability on that which target we are applying for that. And as a bioinformatics uh, work, we have to always the focus on the specific target for that. So locus of genes and the prediction of causal genes is more much important with the network analysis method. Why do we study? Basically, the identify the interactomes, the combine the resource of the comprehensive view age count node count which give the idea for that and i give some name of that that is a string database otr database reactome database interacts these are the basically because every data have the limited size and scope of that so um, 
if someone say that i am using the only the string database for the network reconstruction or the multi omics analysis so i say that it's not perfectly workable model you have to check with the interactomic reactom database also so that time you have to very specific for that so when we are to combine the all the data that will be the very much useful for these studies second thing so all the starting the signal gene map with the common variant and it's a nowadays and the previously also the reported if there is a variant is different your drug will be not workable so that is the same scenario happen with the many drugs work in the different countries like the um, like some drugs is very much efficient work in the uh, south asian region some are working in the european regions but some are not working in the african region so that is a basically the variant level problem we have to justify with the jiva study for that okay systematic argumentations of the jivas with the uh, network propagations uh, when we are talking about that one expression per trait and when we are talking about that string score jiva score personalized page ranking we must combine the all significant module for that like what are the basically trait association study for that network propagation study for like like the page rank the page ranking is the one of the methodology when there is a, a heat method like the which node has the highest number of connections clustering which is the high, highest number of the common groups like the people are uh, usually use the clustering in the phylogenetic band and the ortho orthologous clusters and there are the ocl method specific for that to identify the out group for that and the signification module so which module which use with the case states for the page ranking for that so we have to use the systematic approach in every aspect with the data analysis with the help of the bioinformatics now trait trait genetic functional similarity when there is a from the network to expansions we see the functional level understanding like somewhere the trait one have the some uh, one set of expression trait to who has a topic and same time we have to combine these studies for the particularly uh, our common objective or common pathways so specifically some some people are working on one disease like the type 2 diabetes and uh, they type 2 diabetes they have the different population set like the indian populations very south asian specifically and they are if some people uh, some groups are basically african populations some group are basically in the european populations so um, maybe we cannot surely the every target is perfectly work with that so that's why we use the trait trait genetic and functional similarity with the help of the multi omics and the network expression study with the bioinformatics okay here if you see very beautiful diagram there is a interaction studies of the multi omics data when there is a, a layer of that a different different layer are integrating is that but there is a specifically vnt signaling path we are identify that but the problem here we are uh, anyone see the problem in this network or uh, from this slide they can identify what exactly the problem in this network any any clue on the base on that uh, these are the basically the jigsaw puzzle but whether there is a perfectly signaling pathway or there is a something goes wrong with this pathway okay so i just narrate, narrate uh, one of the things here the pathway looks like the everything is vnt working fine but if you see the downside here there is a call as a hard morphology also the activated so sometimes the people are miss the point here that when they do the network analysis with the multi omics approach they miss that what will be the down regulation in the back end side for that sometimes we say that okay we are getting the very much higher expressions in the some area so that will be the perfectly this disease condition will be happen but if you so if you do the downstream analysis you identify that these expressions sometimes lead to some 
cascade mechanisms for the some serious consequences like the heart uh, arrhythmic or maybe the lipid functioning or maybe some kind of the circadian rhythms so that's why the multi genomics approach with the whole the network analysis will be useful for that also there is a common mechanism we have to identify and over like the same kind of the we are taking the so many pictures and we just overlap with and identify which are the common in the all the pictures like that so there is a we are talking about that uh, 5000 to the up to the 50000 80000 network analysis in the overlap mechanism okay so there is a one analysis for that okay now i quickly go with the um, one of the our uh, skill part when we are talking about that uh why the omics uh, and sorry the skill part we require the integrations okay now we uh, i have the very few time left so we talk about that uh, career part of that quickly go through so that you can take few questions also yeah sure sure so now let's come to the student part uh, i talk very much technical part when there is a multi omics and the multi genomics approach will be that but how and why the bioinformatics is very much uh, usable first of all the bioinformatics is a very upcoming field and the very large number of the discipline knowledge is required for that and it's a advantages for the every uh, company or every kind of the institutions uh, so what you learn that bioinformatics basically the uh, like you have to decide one problem find the tools properly and based on that you can start some coding for that and uh, make some small script some code for that in this one what in need for the industries need industries the computing means they need the person who handle the hpc like hard drive performance computing they need the trainers they actually the trains the lower junior level bioinformatics or the trainee bioinformatics they need the tool developer they need the particular the who are developing the packages tool for that they need the standards like the what are the pipeline standards suppose i have the 15 gb data from the generator from the gut microbes so i have to maintain the standardized protocol for the qc like the quality assurance part and the data management so where there is a data should be stored how to fetch how to give the access the everything are basically so as a industry consumer there is a need for that okay so not what techniques you should learn in the career point of view the patent recognition data mining machine learning algorithm visualizations uh, like the data produce of meaningful informations likewise graph theory when we are applying the some conceptual knowledge for that simulation also important for that okay so this is a some area of applications uh, i this not uh, the restricted here but there is a large number of applications three more important part we must computer science molecular biology and statistics without three you cannot interpret any large set data analysis so there is a three must be learn as a bioinformatics a skill part of that okay now we just segregate the the area when there is a proteomics the there is a structure biology inside of that functional genomics are integration of proteomics and the genomics the whole the bioinformatics and the computational there is a, all the area will be the integrated for that okay now the two kind of the uh, the tools and the tool developer will be there the people are using the tools and the people are developing the tools users are basically called as a bioinformatics uh, bioinformatics and the tool maker is called as a bioinformatician when there is a development of the tools are development of database algorithm development so two categories very much specifically both are the uh, job oriented might be if you are using the tool user suppose i am using a, a genomic browser i am using the genome analysis so there is a huge demand of the particular the genomic uh, genomic data analysis use of the online tools or the inbuilt tool in the system if you are the developing side the company are required some specific tool development so that why the there are the technical side is requirement so depends on the your skill set you can always the categorize the thing 
so this, this is some takeaway for that make a plan be selective uh, reading the for the particular the tools that's a more important part that people are usually start the learning that they refer by some person they using this tool so i use this tool for my analysis but not that every case is working because Find for somebody itself is a very vast area. So you have to matter if you are using the HP. You based on the HP, you develop some uh, cell script or the some common minimum pipeline to analysis. You give the parameter for that and uh, make the some specific outcome of that. So this is a one of the important part of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now. Okay. Okay, so there is a very uh, short uh, last slide of that uh, in my. Uh, so why the value of bind format is the industry main value means if you are not contributing to any organizations, they are not giving any incentive or any kind of the pay pay for. It's a basic fundamental rule for the companies and any organizations. So similarly, the bind format is a creating value means the higher value. It's a making a very standardized on database tools or or we can give, give the quality way when the res outcome is required so if you require the very specific outcome like the drug designing or the multi genomics analysis so bioinformatics can play a crucial role to the identify the which target should be selected how the study will be designed what is the sample size should be taken what kind of those uh, uh, the uh, data size should be that is the my data is right or wrong what is the, how much uh, quality should be hamper in my data so every things will be matter because the any data data intensive projects are rely on the bind formatization so that's why the bind formatization is very much important so these are my few uh, the the pictures when i work with the different organizations in the google summer code and the you know, synthetic biology open developer group and can uh, uh, currently net core working with the scientific python uh, can I hope you understand some of the basic topics point of that. So over thank to you, you Gopal. Thank you very much. I have uh, roamed around all the bioinformatics things, Anna. So now your platform is open for few questions, and uh, if a senior person can ask, like uh, Professor Jugesharan oh, Singh, Vidhi sir, welcome, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. How are you? सर सब आशीर्वाद है सर सब कर रहे हैं कंटिन्यूटी मेंटेन किए हुए हैं और आप कभी-कभी आ जाते तो और भी अच्छा है सर या या इट्स अ इट्स अ इट वाज अ वेरी गुड वेरी गुड लेक्चर राइट नो इनफैक्ट आई कुड नॉट अटेंड सम ऑफ योर लेक्चर्स बिकॉज़ आई वाज मूविंग आई वाज कमिंग टू कनाडा एंड देन सेटलिंग डाउन हियर सो राइट नो आई एम स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम कनाडा बहुत अच्छा है सर बहुत अच्छा है गुड एंड मे बी आई आई विल बी एबल टू अटेंड योर Uh, lectures uh, regularly yes. further also so yes uh, yes sir uh, kirtan kirtan has given a very good uh, uh, overall view of the uh, bioinformatics and uh, uh, his slides were very very good and especially some of his slides where he has shown uh, how industry values uh, uh, i mean um, uh, values uh, creation of the uh, i mean any kind of a Uh, material creation of any kind of a material so uh, uh, you can uh, either create a database or make certain tools or analyze so and uh, this field is almost unlimited unlimited because you can apply all these tools to medical science to environmental sciences uh, to any kind of uh, Uh, you can say uh, physical sciences uh, studies in the physical sciences or chemical sciences drug discovery of course we know is a, um, is uh, something on the top as far as uh, as far as uh, uh, bioinformatics is concerned so immunology 
uh, vaccine, drug, uh, everything. So, um, by which uh, which which gives you to give a lot of uh, uh, information. Uh, a pedestal. Uh, he brought out some very important features of the network analysis. Uh, uh, where there could be some, uh, you can say, uh, shortcomings, but at the same time they are very. Uh, this is very useful. This kind of uh, omics, multi omics analysis, and uh, it was very good. I li I liked the lecture very much. I had a chance to at well when I was at the University of Delhi South Campus. I had a chance to collaborate with uh, Dr. Manish. Uh, who is uh, a very well-known bioinformatician in we analyzed the long-term factors for uh, persistence and the study of the beta lactamase This is part of a uh, group and then go into a rapid method for the finally design using a lot of gene data, antimicrobial resistance gene data. So a lot of bioinformatics uh, I was using. So I think I would like uh, to congratulate Keetan and you also. And then, uh, of course, uh, I would leave this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the forum open to other speakers uh, who would like to uh, ask certain questions or queries. Thank you very much, Kopalji. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes. Sir. yes. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. Canada, I'm going to morning. Yes, it is morning. It is morning. Morning at 10.30. 10.30. So have a nice day, sir. Thank you. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.